So because I know that the crack, you know, reporters are going to catch wind of this, I might as well get in front of it. Uh, so Obed, you know, had a little bit of back pain after the game. Uh, so we did some scans and he does have a lower back injury. Uh, he has a stress fracture and it's not a great injury. We're talking about multiple weeks. He'll be out seeing a back specialist every couple of weeks, but this is gonna need time to heal. So it's really unfortunate, you know, cause the kid was, you know, playing well for us. Then also, you know, had a chance to be with the U20s. So, you know, it's, it's tough, but the fact of the matter is, is, you know, we got a deep team. He covered for JP, you know, we have Josh coming back, Danny, uh, Kellen can fit in there. <clears throat> so the team will be fine, but it's just a, a it's a bummer for the kid because the kid was looking pretty good. How did the, in, or when did the injury happen? Well, stress fractures, we don't know. There was not one specific like episode where it happened. It was just an accumulation. And I've asked our guys and the back specialists to give us ideas of, you know, how we can prevent something like that happening again. But, you know, he is a young kid, a lot of stress on his body, a lot of games. So it happened. Do you, when, when did he start like complaining? I assume at some point he was just like, you know, my back doesn't feel right. He, he's a, look, he's a tough kid. He had it a couple months ago and then it got a little better and then a little bit again, you know, just whatever. And then just after the game, you know, it was pretty painful. So that's the reason for the scan. At 16, you know, being so young, how is he taking the news just as, as, as a person dealing with, dealing with this news? Well, he's okay. I mean, look, he's a pretty tough mental kid. Uh, you know, he, he, he started a game at Matagua. He started a game, you know, I'd forgotten about his debut, was actually against Austin as a 15-year-old. So, you know, mentally he's down, of course, Jackson. Of course. He wants to play. But he'll get through it. I mean, he's going to have a long career. So is this something that you're just going to have to treat and eventually see when he gets better? The treatment, there really isn't much treatment. It's just rest. I mean, they'll do bone stimulator. They'll do all of that, but it's really just it has to it has to heal. It has to heal on its own. It has to, there has to be rest involved. That's why every couple of weeks he'll go back, do some scans, just to make sure we'll know when it's safe for him to come back and play. So for you, who's the next man up? Does it go to Josh? Does it go to Danny? Who, who, who yeah, looks we, smart? Josh, Danny, Kellen. We'll 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 figure something out. Look, we've got three games next week, so. Chances are all three of those players are going to play. So does that mean uh, Josh is close enough uh, that you are starting to factor him into playing time? Josh is close enough to factor into playing time. He's in discussion playing for us on the weekend. Uh, I'll let you know tomorrow what my final decision is, but you know we're, we're, he's in the conversation. Does any move need to be made for, for the depth on the team to bring somebody else in for their like, defiance? Garth is on your show all the time. Why don't you ask him? I, I will. Ask him. I will. <laughs> and he's standing right over there. You can go ask him. Uh, any other uh, injury? You have a few other injured players. Uh, Yamar looked like he was getting close. Yamar is going to feature in the game. And, uh, and any update on Raul and Javi? Raul and Javi are just... You know, look, they got to go through the first bit of protocol. They've, you know, they've made it out to the field jogging slowly. They're starting their rehab, but they're still, you know, those are a couple week injuries. Did you get anything out of uh, Kansas City's game over at the uh, Last the night? Cup? <laughs> well, they rested Melia, uh, Zussi, a couple of guys. They won 6-0, wasn't, you know, the game was out of hand fairly early. So, yeah, not much. What are some of the things that make them a difficult team, you know, them coming over here, despite Sorry. their positioning yeah. on, you know, the standings? Yeah, it starts with Peter. He's a, he's a proud guy. You know, this Open Cup run is good for them, you know, because his league season hasn't progressed the way he would have liked. You know, he's dealing with a rash of injuries, but he's competitive. So their team always going to be competitive, you know. And then Johnny Russell's a good player. Uh, Espinosa's a good player. Zuzi's a good player. Amelia's a good player. I mean, they've, they've, they've got some talent. 
you know, last year uh, they beat you twice here. Uh, is that something that you guys are still thinking about at all? No. I mean, this year's a new year. Uh, you know, we've got our own problems to think about now and moving forward. I'm not, I'm not going back to this year. Uh, you guys announced uh, during training that uh, Stu Hawkins had signed with the Defiance. Yeah. Uh, anything you can say about him? And, and, uh, yeah, good kid. I mean, we've had him out here. Uh, he was still in the academy. Uh, he's got some potential. I mean, look, there's a big jump. That U17 national championship is always, you know, it's always a big deal big deal for the club it's good for the players the individual players to get the accolades but there's a jump from that u17 if you do the work do the statistics you know just because you're good at u17 doesn't guarantee that you're gonna have a long pro career i think that's you know that's that's out there that's factual but Stu has a good shot because he's coachable you know he wants to be here he wants to be part of this club you know, the, the interesting story is how parents make sacrifices for their kids. I mean, parents driving in from Gig Harbor every day to bring them to training. That shows commitment by the family. So I'm appreciative of the parents. So we'll see. Good kid. What are some of the things that, you know, he's obviously very young. Uh, I don't imagine uh, he's in the first team picture anytime soon. But what kind of things does he have to do to get into the first team? Well, I think that, yeah, he's not the first team pitcher yet, but certainly, yeah, let him grow. He'll fill out, working on his weights, figuring out how to be a good pro. Uh, Wade will do a great job with him. You know, Wade did a great job with Obed. Uh, but yeah, it, it's put the brakes on that a little bit. He just has to, you know, mature, season, grow a little bit. Is center back a position that is harder to break in at a young age, or is it just all depends on the player? Are you bringing that up because Jackson was a little older when he broke Jackson, you, or Right, or like an Obed being young. I don't know. Center back is a cerebral cerebral position. I mean, you got to be aware of a lot of things because we have a lot of dangerous forwards in our league. So I might agree with you on that a little bit, Jeremiah. But experience overall, you know, I think his experience overall is going to help him. You know, he's played in some big games at a youth level, youth tournaments, with the national team, the youth national teams. So he'll be okay. You know, the difference between maybe Obed and, and Stewart is if Obed makes a mistake up here, there's still a back four plus a goalkeeper to help. You make a, you make a mistake as a center back, uh, they're on top of your goalkeeper. We saw some video of JP. Obviously, he's not anywhere close, but how's he doing? Have you talked Good. to him? Yeah, he's seen here every day. He talks to the guys, has breakfast with them. He's always here working the weights with Megan. She's great. Uh, Heidi's in charge of his rehab. She's great. So it's it's, it's moving forward. Uh, the last couple of games, Nico's really looked like. I don't want to say vintage Nico, but he just looks very good out there. Uh, is there anything, a guy, you know, 33 years old, still kind of going at that rate? I'll use your words. He looks pretty good. I mean, you know, he, he's, you know, had a couple years of challenges. Sometimes when you're not playing every single minute of every single game for a couple of years, your body kind of rejuvenates a little bit. You know, that happens with guys who, ACL injuries like Jordan, you know, it's a tough injury, but your body is healing, not just the injury, but your entire body. And I think Nico takes very good care of his body. He works hard in the gym in the off season. So maybe a few less minutes and a few less games is a good one. Uh, Danny Leva seem like he, seems like he's sort of gotten back into the rotation yeah. a bit. Uh, is there anything that you've seen uh, different from him or is that just Nico? I don't know, what are you talking about? Well, look, we were really deep in that position. And maybe that's why Danny had not, you know, featured as much. And now that we've got two injuries, plus Kellen is plug and play on different positions, that's three openings. So he's going to get his chances. So 
a lot of it is just Danny being a good player. A lot of it is just, you know, his opportunity and what he does with his opportunity. That's up so for him to decide. We mentioned Danny and Josh and Kellen as people could slide in there. Is, is Christian an option and then bringing maybe a Leo Chu on? Is that, is that another yeah. option on your table? Yeah. We've discussed a lot of that. I mean, look, again, we've got three games this week. Uh, we'll see how those go. We'll certainly make changes as necessary. But for the long term, you know, we've been thinking about as a coaching staff, what is the best version of this team? You know, because JP's injury was significant. You know, so we got to figure out a way, you know, how we solve that one. Now we've got another injury. <laughs> So we're working on it. Along the same lines, you use Jimmy as a right uh, mid. Uh, I don't think that had happened uh, here uh, before that. Uh, is that. Are you looking more at him? And like, what's I guess what's your your vision of Jimmy and how uh, he fits he'll, he'll he'll when he stays healthy and he gets fit, he'll he'll be able to spell Nuhu and play at left back his natural position. The tactics for that individual game, I wanted Jimmy to come inside and Alex to go forward and then Leo Chu to stay wider out on the field on the left hand side and we kind of you know wanted to have a different look on each side of the field in our attacking movements and I think it worked good suits Alex suits Jimmy suited Leo Chu so it worked so it's 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 if I am to interpret that correctly it was more about a specific look you wanted to feature and not so much a change in the way you want to use him jimmy yeah no i think he's he's mainly a left back left wing back but i like his versatility that he can play in a pinch and he's a good defender so late in the game you know if you're trying to close out games you want to bring a more defensive minded guy into the midfield he can do that as well